This is to help you with your worksheet 1-7, and I'm not sure when Mr. Bloom is assigning it. It's either Thursday or Friday, but Monahan and Gosha were assigning it on Friday. So um, uh, two things that you need to know how to do, find midpoints. So we'll talk about that. But in math, any time you want to get in the middle of any two numbers, like even if they're just number numbers like this, just what's in the middle of 2 and 10, you can obviously see it's a 6. But if this was a negative 2 and this was 100 and, or 1,004, sometimes that's a little bit more difficult. So all you ever need to do is just add them up. It's like you're taking an average of 2. So whenever you're getting in the middle, I want you to write add and divide by 2. So again, back to if I had 2 and 10, which I can see that the middle is 6. If I added them, I get 12, and divide by 2, I get 6. So that always works for getting in the middle. Now, would I use that for number 1? No. If you don't know that 4 is between 3 and 5, you have bigger issues than the midpoint. But um, if you're working with ones, even negative 6 and negative 10, it's pretty obvious. Let's try um, number 3. Maybe you don't even want to think it out. If you just add them, say what's 5 plus negative 9, do it in your head or on your calculator, whatever is preferred. You're allowed to use a calculator. Um, and cut it in half. You'll get in the middle. And if you, you do it wrong, you'll be outside of these ends and you'll know it. So this is a negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2. So that's the middle. But let's suppose somebody thought, um, again, don't write if I write in blue, let's say. Suppose you did a, your arithmetic wrong and you said that it was 5 and a negative 9 make negative 14. And you divide it by 2 and you say, well, it's negative 7. You can see that negative 7 isn't the middle of a 5 and a negative 9. So it's pretty obvious when you make a mistake on these. So glance at your answers and make sure that they seem right. So when you're on a segment in the coordinate plane, so like you're sitting here on the XY grid and you have a segment, to get in the middle and find the coordinates of the midpoint, you do very similar to what we do up here. It's just you're going to have a middle of the X's, so I want you to label these. This is your first X and your second X, and you need to get in the middle of the Y. So you have your first Y and your second Y. Sometimes you can use common sense because you can just see what's in the middle, and there's a formula if you can't. So let's talk about, let's call the midpoint M. Let's go on all of these and call it M. Let's call it, you don't have to call it M, but it's nice. So let's on all of these put a big M and we'll do one of them and be done with it. So in order to get in the middle, what you're going to do is add up the X's. And I'm just going to write add X's and divide by 2. And then you're going to add the Y's and divide by 2. So let's go do that on these. I'm going to add the x's. Here's an x, and here's an x. So I'm going to say 6 plus 4. Just like it says here, add the x's. I'm going to divide it by 2. And then I'm going to go add the y's. 7 plus 3. And divide it by 2. And then it's just arithmetic. On both of these, um, my 6 plus 4 is 10 divided by 2. My 7 plus 3 is 10, divided by 2. Those are both two nice fives. So I'd say the midpoint of segment AB is 5, comma 5. Now that one you could have pretty much done with common sense because you can see that 5 is between these. You can see that 5 is right in the middle of these. But if you can't, you add the x's, divide by 2, Add the y's, divide by 2. Let's look at number 8 together. I'm going to add the x's, so I grab these first coordinates. I'm going to divide by 2. I'm going to grab these y coordinates, the second ones, and I'm going to divide by 2. My answer is a point, so I make sure I put those brackets in the comma. It's the point that's right in the middle if I were to graph these. So what it's saying is if A is here at 0, 0, and B is 5 to the left and 12 up, way up here, this formula gets me right the location of the middle. So I'd have a negative 5 over 2, which doesn't reduce, so I'll just leave it. It's negative 2 and a half, but we can just leave that. And then for this one, I'll have 12 over 2, which is 6. That will get me right in the middle. All right, so midpoint, nice and easy. Now this one's a little different on here. They're giving you the midpoint, 
and asking you to find the other end. So they're saying, okay, this is the midpoint. Here's an endpoint. Where's the other endpoint? There's a formula for it, but it's way easier to not use the formula. This is what I tell you to do. Write the midpoint right below it. Okay, maybe I'll call it M. And what happens is if you walk to a midpoint, I'm going to go over here. Suppose I know I have this endpoint and I walk to the midpoint. Suppose I went seven units. In order to get to the other endpoint, I'd need to go seven more. So what I would tell you to do is just walk to the middle and keep on walking. And then you don't need a formula. So to get from zero to six, from one end to the middle, I'd have walked six steps forward because there's a positive six gap in here. So if I go six more forward, I'll be at the other end point. That's nice, you can see that six is smack in the middle of zero and 12, it always works. So walk from eight back to negative 10. You have to think of how far you'd be walking. You'd go back a step to seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So you have to go back eight and then 10 more. So this, you take 18 steps backwards, go 18 more, just keep on walking and you'll get to the other endpoint. It's kind of nice. We'll do one more of those. I wouldn't use a formula for it. Write the midpoint down, walk to it, and then walk away. So let's walk to the midpoint. We would go eight steps forward. So go ahead and do that. Eight steps forward will bring you to 14. And then right here, three steps backward to negative 13. It always works. So if you're on the graph and you're trying to find the midpoint, sometimes you can just see it. Um, other times it's helpful to, because you'll look and you'll be like, ah, I can't quite tell what's in the middle on this one. Then what I would do is write the coordinates down. So go to C and it's one, two, three to the left, one, two, three, four up and write negative three, four. And then go to D and it's six to the right and one up and write six comma one. And then use that formula that I just gave you for getting in the middle. To get in the middle, we add the x's. So grab the first x and the second x, add them up, cut it in half. You're averaging them to get in the middle. Add the y's, the first y, and the second y, and cut it in half. Negative 3 up 6 will put you at 3. 4 plus 1 is 5. Oops. And you can leave them as an improper fraction or a top-heavy fraction, but if you prefer to make three halves, one and a half, and two and a half, that's fine. But what this is saying is at one and a half and at two and a half, you'd be right in the middle. So that's it with the midpoint. On the next page, you also have to not only get in the middle of the two points, like we just did on the previous page. How do we do that? Add the x's, cut it in half. Add the y's, cut it in half. You're also going to be asked, how long is it? And there's a formula for that. I'm, you have that in your notes, so I'm not going to repeat the formula. What I'm going to do is repeat a process. In order to evaluate the distance formula, the very first thing you do is you grab the x's, and you subtract them. And really what you're doing, it doesn't matter which order actually, so subtract x's. You really, when you do that, when you subtract two numbers, like 10 minus two, you say how far apart they are. 10 and two are eight apart. So the real thing is, is to get how far apart are these. If you know it, write it down. Or you could say six minus negative one. Let's do that. Or you could say negative one minus six. It doesn't matter. When you subtract a negative, you add the opposite. That gives us a 7. And you can see these are 7 apart. So if you prefer to just look at it and say, how far apart are they, that'll work as well. Second thing you do is you subtract the y's or figure out how far apart they are. All right, so you go grab your y values, subtract them. 7 minus 7 is 0, or you could just say there's 0 apart. So you get those two numbers. They're the distance between the x's, 7 and the distance between the y's, 0. Then you square them. Okay, so 7 squared, 0 squared, and add. Okay, you add them up. And the fourth thing you do is take the root. So once I add those up, I'd have the square root of 7 times 7, which is 49, not 14. And I get a nice 7, because 49 is a perfect square. 
we'll go do one other of those. So here's the process. I said you grab the x's, you figure out how far apart they are. In order to do that, you could subtract them. You could do 2 minus 10 or 10 minus 2. But either way, you're going to get an 8 or a negative 8. It won't matter which one, because when you square them, 8 times 8 is 64. Negative 8 times negative 8 is also 64. So that doesn't really matter. So I subtract the x's and I get an 8. I subtract the y's, negative 6 minus 0, or I could just say those are 6 apart, but let's suppose I subtracted and I get negative 6. So again, this, I, it doesn't matter the order because the next thing I do is I square them. So I'm going to square 8, put parentheses, I'm going to square this. Then I'm going to add them according to my model, and then I'm going to take the root. So 8 times 8 is 64. Negative 6 times negative 6 is 36. And be careful with that. It's a negative time. Make sure you don't think that that's a negative. Anytime you square anything, you'll get positive answers. So you have the square root of 100. That's what you get when you add these. That's a perfect 10. You do the same thing when it's on a graph. The only difference is you need to write the coordinates down. So we'll go do 19, and that will be it. This is 3 to the left, so I'll write a negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 4 up. I'll write a 4. This is 6 to the right and 1 up. Using the distance formula, I need to know how far apart are the x's. You can either see it or you subtract. You can subtract in either order. You could go negative 3 minus 6 and give me a negative 9. You could say 6 minus negative 3 and give me a positive 9, because when you square each of these, you'll get the same answer. Or you could just look at them and say it's 9, 9 units from here to here. Either way, there's a 9 or a negative 9 you'll write down. Same thing. From 4 to 1, 4 minus 1 is 3, or you can see that they're 3 apart. So that's finding how far apart are the x's, how far apart are the y's, and now you square them, add them up, and take the root. And that's a safe way to do the distance formula. How far apart are the x's, how far apart are the y's, square them, add them up, and take the root. So that would be 9 times 9 is 81, 3 times 3 is 9, and this would be the square root of 90. That I don't know. I don't know what times itself is 90, so I believe in this section they're having you round to the nearest tenth, so you'd have to take out your calculator and take the root. All right, so that is it. You would need to finish the rest. I hope that was helpful. You might want to, at this point, um, go to your note card. Actually, let's do that right now anyway. Go to your note card and write 1.7, and let's put that information on there. So you might want to pause the video, go find that note card that we started and go put that information on there. First thing we need to know how to do is how to find a midpoint of two points. They are called a first x and a first y, and a second x and a second y. And how did I tell you to get in the middle? Go box that in. We'll highlight it later. We add the x's and we cut it in half. We add the y's, so the second coordinates, and we cut it in half, and we write it as a point. The next thing we did was the distance formula. I'll write the formula down, but again, the process for evaluating it's a little bit more important. Again, I'd be putting this on your note card that you can use on your test next week. So distance between two points. Let's use the same ones from up here. You subtract the x's. It doesn't really matter. The formula says do x2 minus x1, but it really doesn't matter which order you subtract them in. You subtract the y's. You square that number. You square that number. You add. You take a root. So let's write that out. Number one, you need to subtract x's or ask yourself how far apart are they. Number two, you need to square the y or subtract the y's. So subtract y's or ask yourself how far apart are they. I'll write a little slower here, let you get caught up. So let's go off to the side and throw a tiny little example. Suppose the points were at 6, negative 1, and the other point was located at negative 3, 4. And you were trying to find 
the distance between them. You would subtract the x's. You would say 6 minus negative 3, which is 6, plus 3, which is 9. Or you look at these and you say there's a gap of 9 between these on a number line. You'd subtract the y's. You could say negative 1 minus 4 or 4 minus negative 1. Or you could just look and say from negative 1 to 4, those are 5 apart. It doesn't matter. You want to know for these how far apart are they. Next thing you need to do, square them. Square. So you go like this, square, square, and add. Boom. And then 4, you take the square root. So make sure when you're taking your test next week that you do this, these four steps and you'll get it right. 9 times 9, 5 times 5, add them up, take the root. And go ahead and use a calculator if you need one. This would be 106, take the root. They're probably going to ask you to round to the nearest tenth. So I will get you the correct answer. So make sure you have a calculator that you know where the root button is. If you don't, um, ask me for one or ask me where it is on your calculator. This ends up being about 10.3 if I round it. And that was pretty much all for 1.7. So hopefully you can finish that worksheet and peace out.